So, Tanky, what did you do today? Uh, honestly, man, I uh, almost killed a few, a few people with my car. I haven't been driving in a while, so. Oh, unfortunate. <laughs> Grum, you? Same as him, but. I. How about you, Arson? <laughs> well, seeing as though I think today was my senior skip day, I don't really know what day it is. Um, I really just did nothing. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it sounds, sounds Fair. fun. I, it nice. Yeah. I mean, want to know who else hasn't done anything for a while? Prehistoric creatures. Fuck yeah. I no. think we should change that. Yeah, I, I genuinely think that bringing them back... And I'm not talking about some blockbuster that's more or less gonna make millions, even though it probably won't be worth a flip. I'm talking about real, real solid things, like a real-life prehistoric park. I agree. I think, you know, I mean, if we were able to, like, clone pigs at this point, I think it doesn't seem too far off that uh, we'd be able to, like duplicate dinosaur DNA even if even if not dinosaur but like prehistoric yeah, like, pre mammals, yeah, like, like the Smilodon, New like, Zealand birds and whatnot you yeah. know yeah, even even so like we we even if we can't even do that we have enough we're very advanced in genetic splicing kind of sure to believe I it's only been done on the house flies from what I've heard but um like genetic splicing with house flies you can literally scientists can rearrange where limbs are and yeah, do they what's do like what a like, like they made the antenna's legs. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. They like put a like actually? a uh, yeah, yeah, they put like an eye on like its abdomen or something. They gave it a second horrifying. They gave it a second abdomen. That's oh, did so they? it's basically like a caterpillar fly now. Yeah. It looks a lot like a a small bee, which is kind of scary. See, now I have to look this up. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it's real. Um I saw no. it a few days ago on a YouTube video. No, I, I believe you. I just I need to see this. <laughs> but well, with how far we've come with stuff like that, I genuinely convinced we can have some little guys. At least, at least the small ones. At least the small ones. Oh my dear small. God! I told you, right? I hate to interrupt, but that is horrifying. Wait, hold on. I I gotta go see this. Wait. We can put a picture of it on the screen real quick if we want to. You know? Yeah. Just put it up for a second. Maybe censor it heavily. But it's just a big black image. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to say. But, um, we, we as a species have advanced in the most, in the past 10 years or so, we've advanced more so than we have overall in human history. From, from what I can oh, tell. I thought it was like since the early 2000s. I didn't know. It yeah, was it was like, like early 2000s or so uh, around that range, but still, we've come so far. That is true. Hold on. Let me. Um, I was reading an article too about like how there was I can't remember when the article was written. Holy smoke! It was written in 2013. That's a little bit ago. Yeah, just a while away. May 29th, 2013. Uh, a perfect, uh, a preserved, fully grown woolly mammoth with like flowing blood has been seen for the first time trapped in Siberian ice. Dang, yeah, wasn't like I the mammoth tube or something? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the discovery is during like. Uh, wait, hold on. Russians, I'm reading it off now. The Russian scientists made the discoveries uh, during the excavation of a 50 to 60 year old female animal. And the uh, I'm not even gonna try that. Why? Yeah. In some islands, uh, in the Arctic seas. I'm. It's. I've heard similar stories. I think they were older, and I forget the specifics of it. But mammoths, mammoths, if we ignore dinosaurs for a moment, mammoths are 100 percent, 100 percent plausible, if not possible at this point. Because if you look at it, I forget what time frame it was, but a while ago, some Russians went on an expedition in Siberia as well, and they had to shelter up in a cave, right? In this cave, or on the si side of the ridge, there was an entire frozen mammoth. 
and its legs, like part of its leg was sticking out of the ice because it was thawing out because it was getting a little cooler mm-hmm. or warmer. And um, you know how fresh that meat was? No. They really? cut it right off. They cut it right off and cooked it, and there was there was no repercussions from it. Seriously? So yeah. if it's it, it's definitely not soon. It's definitely not recent meat, of course. Probably ten th- ten to five thousand at the at the most. But um, it's. I mean, if it was preserved that well and kept that well, it's. Uh, who's to say that we can't just take some of that DNA and do what we want with it? That's impressive. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I um I think they're quiet now. So like and I even remember I was in one of my classes when uh an article was released about a perfectly preserved uh dinosaur embryo in an egg that they found in China. Like Yeah, it wasn't like some that, sort of, like I think it was like an over yeah, it was like some yeah, kind yeah. of raptor. If it was like an over raptor type species, that would probably be one of the safer ones to bring back. Yeah, I was talking with my father about it, and he's like, "I I had brought this topic up a while ago to like even the biology uh, biology teacher in my uh, in my school. Uh, she said that it could be very plausible. Like, I mean, of course, we wouldn't want to revive like the biggest apex predators that the world has ever seen, but like, I you know." We raptors wouldn't do. I mean, I'm sure they'll alter the chain of life that we have around here, especially in those regions. But yeah, I I think like, I feel like it'll be a safe it would be a safe use of our time and efforts to get to recreate something like that. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. to just like even just to study a creature like an over raptor and like what its behaviors would be and how it would live its life, even if altered by. Like, if, even if we need to splice it with current DNA to fill in those gaps, like in Jurassic Park, if that was at all real, I think it would be... It would just be such a sci- marvel of science to be able... And, like, such a gift to be able to get the honor of studying a creature like not, that. Not even to mention the fact how our generation... No, we, we've already, of course, lost the opportunity of being able to interact with them while we're kids, but the next generation and a generation after... If we set this up for them, they could learn it at an early age, and then they could maybe even perfect it. So we don't exactly. have to make any compromises. It's just a pure, authentic piece. Yeah. Thank you. You. Well, I think that there's a lot of like ethics that come in this. Like. That's true. Is yeah. it should we be allowed to like bring back an extinct animal like to an environment it's not familiar with, and only for the purpose of like what being a. Uh, animal in captivity its entire life i mean like dogs are uh, they're similar but at least they're like concurrent they're built for this place yeah exactly but like yeah. and to branch off of that there i truly don't believe that there's any environment on this planet where a woolly mammoth could possibly thrive like at oh, all. No. I, the, the, climate I, the climate's too, too different the yeah. last place they were at was like on an island far off near greenland and iceland and they were just isolated, but they slowly died off because of the fact of how there was less and less to eat there. Because, like we, like I just said, they were on an island. Yeah. Yeah, I just personally, I don't think like the cold's an issue. Because, like, as you saw, like Chicago a while back was like as cold as Antarctica for a few days, like a couple years ago. Wow. Yeah, I know it's kind of crazy. I actually didn't know that. That's nuts. Wait, wait, yeah. where again? No, Chicago was like negative sixty oh, degrees no. like a couple of years ago for like two Lord. days. Yeah, it was nuts. Just, no, no, but I just in Chicago, man. Chicago oh, was built different, bro. But they hate Chicago, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um. Yeah, like environment, the question, especially something like an over raptor or any type of small raptoroid dinosaur. It was the fact of how 
they are built for more humid temperate climates and we're like the entire world as a whole is both colder and warmer in some spots than it was all the way back then so if we were to introduce it, it plus not to mention the fact of what it would hunt like what would it eat i mean we would probably try and substitute like uh probably ostrich eggs or another, any other large avian or like reptilian egg Yes, yeah. But I doubt it would really be the exact nutrients that it would need to survive. Yeah, no. It's just the world has come so far since the like the prehistoric ages. I mean, hold on. How long how long ago did the Overraptor live? Like a hundred and ten million years ago I think I saw, but or I could like be wrong. Cretaceous or such? Yeah. Seriously. Like it's just too it's just too far and we would have to make so many guesses and estimates just yeah, to see a hundred million roughly a hundred million years ago was when that thing was alive Shit. it's oh, that's a while pretty crazy yeah but go i ahead. think we can all oh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead you're good no but uh i think that one other thing that we could like appreciate through like this is like how oh, it's still like despite the time it's still somewhat comparable to like animals we had today yeah, like, I uh, agree. Exactly. For like example, if you uh, take this little and this little fellow right here, and this little uh, this little cre this little creature, I, I I I think I think it's pretty neat how like despite all that time, like you can still like point out some pretty big similarities there, you know? Yeah, I mean, weren't yeah. there, like the chicken legs like the closest thing like? to Tyrannosaurus legs we have right now. I mean, I know that's so poorly described by me, but... They're, um, I mean, it's it just one -one scale it just up. Less muscle. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Like, I mean, if I look at, now I, I watch the Urban Rescue Ranch, like, frequently. Yeah! Post, yeah! Like, but, um, like, just looking at Kevin and Karen, like, and I then I look at an over, or not an overraptor, a Gallimimus, or like a Struthiomimus, or any of those types of creatures. It's just horrifying about how similar they could have possibly looked, like, even with their skeleton structure. Sure, they didn't have that giant, like, long lizard tail, but... If, yeah, it's the perfect midpoint between two as well is, um, terror birds and Kleckens and stuff like that. You um had the perfect midpoint. Of course, if we were to find like an, a viable fossil to bring those back, I feel like they, because if y'all remember, they got outcompeted by Smilodons, and Smilodons are not the same as li lions. Of they're course, they're pretty close. I mean, they're pretty close, but they're faster. I feel like if we brought them back, and s for some ungodly reason, release them back in the African savanna. Zebras would be at risk. Wildebeest would probably be at risk. Not and mention, like, those are terror birds. I think even some of the larger herb herbivorous creatures would be heavily at risk just because of the extra yeah. invasive species. No, oh, I I don't know about short term. I don't know about that. But from what I were from what I remember seeing, like that, like over time, like in the Americas, like I'm and I'll call me my bluff on this because I'm extremely rusty on all this sort of stuff. I never even like really researched it. But I'm pretty sure, like, the th whole thing with, like, the terror birds is they were, like, specialized in, like, hunting, like, small, fast animals, like, the, uh, like, the, uh, what, what, what you call them? Yeah, the small horses and stuff, and as, like, it got colder and animals required to be, like, bulkier in order to, like, sustain their temperatures, like, bigger, like, prey items came to fashion, and that's what Smilodon was, like, good at e hunting down and eating and all that stuff. No, so I know? think... Oh, sorry. No, no, so I'm just saying, I'm just thinking, like... With all, like, the limber animals, that like, the antelopes, and, like, I think zebra and wildebeest might be pushing it a tiny bit. But, like, there's still, there's certainly, like, no... African wild dogs, no. they would be, because they're small. They might be feisty, but they're small, and I guarantee you, if a terror bird found a pack of those, they would not be able to do a single thing about it. Hyenas would probably bully them off, unless yeah. it's a singular one. I mean, the hyena's jaw strength is pretty tough, but... I think it's, like, like it's one it's of the toughest, right? It's, like, got a thousand... I think it has 1,100 PSI, if I remember correctly. I looked yeah, like, enough to, like, shatter bones, I'm pretty yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, if I got a lock on you, your arm was gone. But, it just, they're... 
I feel like they're too small. Hold on, let me look up how big a a, a terror bird is real quick, and I'll get. I, I mean, I don't. Really, think... only like the size of like a medium dog. They're really not that big. What the terror birds or? No, 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 no. The hyenas. Oh yeah. no! I, honestly, I don't think a terror bird would be able to like do much against like three or four high like a hell, maybe even is, two no. holy smoke hold on i'm gonna post a picture of like a terror bird size and then i'll i'll, I'll let you come back to that because yeah. no i knew they were big but like yeah but like just just take a look at that i'll put it on screen hold on i'll, I'll go look at my that... little screen over here <laughs> yeah that monitor over there i got my phone here but um, gamer monitor they got th i mean that big hook beak that, that big hook and they're Imagine you see an ostrich's legs. Imagine how strong their legs would be if they need to catch and kill prey. It's like a is it giraffes that kick as well. They got long, long yeah. legs as well. Like if something like this were to kick you, plus they have hooks. They have like hooked claws a little bit there. Yeah. That if that were to kick you, you'd be in trouble. Good. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's, I just I don't want to mess with that. Yeah, it's real bad. I mean, the ethics and like they. They were alive for how long? We the human race has been alive for like a fraction of how long dinosaurs are around. Or any of these species and, have probably been around longer than that. we have. Exactly, the crocodiles. They haven't evolved like <laughs> at all. They have been nature's perfect killing machine for so long, and I can just only imagine like it's it's just I don't think we would be able to adequately prepare for dinosaurs being back on the planet we i mean we're I, already honestly, hunted as a species exactly. by something like a polar bear yeah, polar bears actively hunt humans now there was a david attenborough was talking about how he went on a trip and they were trying to record uh, footage of seals but they had happened to come across a polar bear like that surfaced on the ice at one point and then it went back down and he, they thought that he was hunting the uh the seals that they were going after and uh, every now and then it would surface up close to them, but not too close. Like, it was it was checking them out. But after they came back from, I think it was, it was probably Antarctica. I can't remember exactly, but they, they had found out. They got, like, Attenborough took a really close look at it now that he wasn't, like, in the scene. He found out that the, pair, the bear was hunting the cameramen, not the seals. No. Was showing the showing its like form of hunting, but heading towards the cameraman. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, like something like that, but on the scale of something, I'm not gonna pull out like T Rex because that's that's not something we would need to worry about. I'm gonna pull out something like an Allosaurus or a Ceratosaur. Yeah. Like something are... like that. Like they're they're pretty big, and if that were to be coming at you, hunting you, they could. You would not be able to do much. Like, yeah, sh good job. You have a handgun on you for protection. If you shoot that thing with a nine millimeter, it is only gonna piss it off. Yeah, that's not gonna well, do anything. I, I mean, yeah, again, you gotta remember like pain tolerance. Like, I, I'm not saying like dinosaurs are weak. I mean, they're they're decently strong animals, but I think we got. I think like sometimes like to see these certain matchups, we sort of undervalue like how painful it can be sh to. How painful it can be to be shot, and like how an unexperienced animal ha who doesn't know what just hit him would react. That's, That's true. Fair. That's fair. But like, you see how like scared people get at bee stings, and like they, but <laughs> fair like, enough, yeah, yeah. I would. Know and, and we know what that is. If a dino, I mean, I mean, if I was like a, if I. <laughs> Good. No, no, no. I was just gonna compare it, like getting shot, gunned down by a cat. But go ahead. <laughs> uh oh shoot! What was I gonna say? Um. lost my train of thought it's i will also point out the fact though if dinosaurs were to hunt humans people are already there's already poachers out there right yeah there's um and they poach elephants oh yeah for their Elef the, the elephant ivory market is nuts imagine how much like i think of it like this i guarantee it, it's just cartilage not, oh sorry it's just bone as well yeah. Like a ceratosaur and allosaur horns or spikes on their head. But people would still want to have, like, skulls like that in yeah. their house that is brand new. If you went out, people would hunt those things. And they would probably be good at it, too. Because something like a small gun, if things, sh if you're, if they, if they're shot at, 
at first, like Tanky was saying, they would be deathly afraid. Even if, even if it didn't hurt that much, they'd be afraid. Yeah, because yeah. Of a loud sim. But after, let's say, 30 years pass, two generations have gone through, they know what a gun is. Exactly, yeah. But if it's something like a hunting rifle with a high round, high caliber round, or, or shoot, at this point, an elephant gun would be in the question of having to be used to take down these things. If you were to shoot one, an allosaur, in the chest region with an elephant gun in the range, we've all watched Tremors here. We know what happens <laughs> if uh, if we we know what happens when an elephant gun is used on a large animal. Yeah, it's it's uh it's gonna go straight through it and. I don't think I don't think many dinosaurs, other than maybe the big sauropods, just because how much is there, will be able to survive one. I mean, and to think like people, poachers will sometimes kill the mother animal and take the the child in for just to sell as like a house pet. I can exactly. Only imagine, Holy like, shit! Like I could have a sauropagonax in my house. Exactly. Like imagine walking yeah. into some millionaire's house and you see a baby triceratops just strolling on through, and that thing could. Exactly. That thing could snap at any time and destroy everything. Even as a baby, its its bite force is probably strong enough to bite your entire, cleave your whole entire arm in half. I mean, even ignoring the bite force, just you know how like okay, if we compare a Triceratops back then or any Ceratopsian, like Pachyrhinosaurus, I think that's a that's a better example. Yeah. To, to a rhinoceros, and how those things can flip a car. I can only imagine what a creature three times the size of that could possibly do. It could... It... It... Think of it like this. Someone keeps it... Like you said, a millionaire. Maybe even a billionaire. Not saying yeah. Elon Musk would do it, of course, but... Somebody <laughs> could have a fully grown pack of dinosaurs in their estate, like, in an underground, like, facility in, like, New York. What if that thing gets loose? Sure, there's police, but if police shoot at that thing, it's gonna have to be in specific shot areas. And if that thing finds like a a bus a, or a double decker, I mm. guarantee you that thing could flip it over. No, like, I, like, what am I trying to say here? If even if we didn't revive them, and they've been along this, they've been alive this whole time, a hollow Earth style. And, like, and a okay, go on, go on. I, I'm, going <laughs> I'm going somewhere. I have a point. <laughs> I, I like where this is going. Okay, I do too. I have a point. And an Abrachiosaurus, one of the the, uh, the biggest dinosaurs, one of the biggest animals to have ever walked this planet, happened to surface done? and pass away of, of, of natural causes, like just anywhere. People would find out about it, and they'd harvest it without asking any questions. They would just they wouldn't leave it be just to die in a natural way we'd pick the thing apart and I, to me that's not really i don't Humane. feel like that's super ethical or like yeah, appropriate to do with, with the creature of that magnitude and majesty there was a show on netflix yeah, like i Vladimir forget the Lennon. name of it Love Death and the, um yes that yeah. with the giant with the giant man on, yeah. on the beach at first, everybody was marveling it, and I guarantee it would be the same thing. Everybody would be marveling, like there'd be news reports going on, like dinosaur found, live brachiosaurus found dead in like Wyoming or something silly like that. Like and, in um, Nevada. <laughs> and um, you, you, f they find it there. First few days will be spent marveling, but after the decomposing starts, people will start harvesting it. I guarantee you, like. A large portion of its meat would be sold to the highest bidder for consumption. Yeah, probably. I mean, but... that was odd. It's, yeah, it's I am. Um... Just the fact, like, we started talking. Like, I love how we started talking about like, is it plausible? But then we started talking about like the ethics of if we should. And I this is just like, Jurassic World Dominion discussion I was just at this say, point. I feel like... <laughs> I mean, yeah, with its yeah. release in, like, what, a week? I feel like this was a really appropriate time. I, two uh, minutes! We, you know, it's funny, it's funny It's funny. you say this, because while this was going on, I actually bought tickets for yeah, it. Yeah, me and my friends are going to go see it, like, opening night, and I'm so excited. Same. Wow. I am... Um, I, I'm going to go see it, and we'll probably pick up this discussion back when we go on to it, and maybe re revisit it for a few minutes at the beginning of the next episode. Yeah. I think, yeah, we could always do, like, a little recap thing. I think that'd be nice. Yeah. So, are we done? Um, 
Thank you. Okay, okay. now uh, today for our sponsor, I'd like to thank Raid Shadow Raid Legends. Shadow <laughs> Legends. Uh, we're gonna put their ad right up here on the screen. So uh, yeah. It's... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no. But this is a Raid Shadow Legends, as you can see here. Uh, it's very, very uh, trusted software. You know, it, I, th I think we, I think we should personally all invest in a little bit of it. And okay, I think that's, I think that's all we have for today. And um. Yeah, is that it? All right, everyone, get in the car.